Почитувани гости во неделното интервју на Радио Слободна Европа е евроамбасадорот Девид Гир. Со него разговараме за процесот на преговори, за евентуалното одржување на референдум, уставните измени, скринингот и спроведувањето на реформите. Амбасадор е Гир, преговорите со Европската унија се условени со внесување на бугарите во Македонскиот устав. Доколку не бидат донесени уставните измени, дали тоа значи дека процесот на преговори ќе биде блокиран? The way in which the agreement is constructed, negotiations have opened, the screening has begun, and uh, we have held something called an intergovernmental conference to kick the whole process off. Once the screening is completed at this stage, to go to the next point, there would need to be another intergovernmental conference. And the holding of that intergovernmental conference is dependent upon this bilateral agreement between the two countries concerned. Of course, it's a sovereign decision for North Macedonia to change the constitution, although you already have a, a good record on inter-ethnic inter relations, and this would further solidify that. Um, but what would happen if it didn't go ahead? I think the most likely scenario would be that the accession process would then stop there. You would have completed the screening, but the holding of the intergovernmental conference and the next steps would wait pending the resolution of this issue. Not because a third country has come along and vetoed, but because this country decided to step back uh, from that commitment that it's made uh, bilaterally with Bulgaria. Um, за да се донесат уставните измени потребно е двотретенско мнозинство во собранието. А, лидерот на ВМРО ДПМН е Христијан Мицковски а, најави а, спроведување на референдум за преговарачката рамка со а, Бугарија. А, каков е вашиот став за евентуално одржување на референдум? First of all, on the issue of a possible referendum, I would say that again this is a sovereign decision for this country to make, so I'm not going to comment specifically on that. But again, maybe we could step back and look at the big picture here. The strategic choice that this country has made for a number of years now is to enter into the European Union, and the process has now been launched. Why is it important? There are a number of very clear reasons why this country would benefit from membership of the European Union, and the EU would benefit from having you as part of the family. On the economic side, the European Union is the largest single market in the world, also your neighbour. This offers enormous uh, opportunities for business, for trade, for investment, for the improvement of living standards, livelihoods, for um, ensuring that young people develop the skills necessary to compete in the job market in this bigger single market. But it's not just that. There are also other very clear benefits from accession to the European Union. Пред некој ден имавте средба со Мицковски. Дали на средбата стана збор за уставните измени и за референдумот? Actually I've been meeting with um, the leaders of all parties and will continue to do so or nearly all parties will continue to do so in the, in, in the coming months as part of our regular contact and of course we have very open discussions about all issues notably regarding um, the uh, opening of accession negotiations and the step and the next steps forward and those discussions with all of the different parties I think are important to explain our position and to understand the positions of others. Имаше ли волја кај Мицковски за донесување на уставните измени? Well, I think it's for Vimeo de Pomene to, to set out their positions on these different issues, as it is for all parties to do that. I don't want to go into giving views on specific parties. We are ready to talk to all partners who are committed to the European integration path. Колку Европската унија ќе биде гарант дека Бугарија нема да ги кочи и блокира преговорите во случај кога Северна Македонија ќе ги исполнува своите уврски од билатералниот протокол. As I've said on a few occasions now, I mean, look at the countries that have joined. Did the Spaniards become less Spanish? Did the Estonians, a smaller country, become less Estonian? Did the Maltese, an even smaller country, become less Maltese? No, clearly not. And there is no reason that this country should uh, uh, have its identity put into doubt in any way whatsoever. It's also important though, because you ask me, are there guarantees? And we have to be clear, there are no guarantees. The 
the process itself, not 100% guarantees, the process itself cons consists of a series of um, moments when unanimous decisions need to be taken. That's how it works for all countries concerned. No negotiating framework cannot, can guarantee that other issues may not be raised. If they are raised, though, the European Union, as it has done in other accession processes, will deal with them. Шефот на руската дипломатија Сергеј Лавров изјави дека има впечатлива разлика помеѓу она што македонците и црногорците го чувствуваат за Русија и она што нивните политичари го прават под принуда од Брисел, Европската унија и НАТО. Колку незадоволството кај граѓаните од условувањата на Северна Македонија според вас предизвикува проруско или антизападно расположение? The whole project, the whole approach is not on coercion but based upon cooperation based upon the voluntary desire to join and be part of this union which is based on uh, fundamental democratic principles. Now, if we step back a moment and look at uh, what we're seeing Russia's unjustified and unprovoked war in Ukraine, the bombing of cities, residential areas, schools, kindergartens, um, there we see the complete opposite. So I'm not sure that uh, Foreign Minister Lavrov is the best place to, to, to give us lectures about uh, compulsion or not compulsion. Амбасадор Егир по одржувањето на меѓувладината политичка конференција на Европската унија и Северна Македонија започна скрининг процесот. Која е разликата со скрининг процесот кој започна во 2018 година? Now the screening process consists of two stages. First of all what we call explanatory screening which is a process whereby the European Commission explains the wider process, what you can expect, the timetable, how to approach it. And that actually is already well advanced because, as you rightly say, a great deal of preparatory work took place before the opening of negotiations. But that's the thing. The difference now is the negotiations have opened, so the stages are the explanatory screening and the second stage the bilateral screening. Now, what's the bilateral screening? This is where um, we go into a great deal of detail looking at the situation in different sectors. We start with what we call the fundamentals, which includes the rule of law, uh, among others. So we go into it, we look at it in detail, see where the gaps are, see where the weaknesses are, fix the kind of benchmarks that need to be met in order to ensure that the country advances on, in a genuine way on these reforms, not just to get the legislation right, but to ensure that the legislation is implemented ultimately and enforced. Кога и на кој јазик ќе биде подписан договорот за соработка со Frontex? Well, Frontex is an important uh, agreement because it's about helping to ensure um, border management here in line with European standards. So it's in the security interests <coughs> excuse me, it's in the security interests of us all. Now, the European Commission is very actively um, taking this forward, and we hope that that will be um, concluded very soon. can't give you an exact date because it's an ongoing discussion, but they're very active. What languages? Well, it will be, uh, once, uh, once agreed, it will be published in the 24 official languages of the European Union, and the Macedonian language. And indeed, President von der Leyen has already said that. Дали не признавањето на македонскиот јазик од страна на Бугарија ќе игра некаква улога во официјалната документација со Европската унија? So, what's important is that you had a negotiating framework where Macedonian language appears like that. No asterisk, no footnote. So that is the basis on which we will move forward uh, in the future, referring to Macedonian language. In fact, going back to that room in Brussels, if you had been there, you would have seen on the booths, it said Makedonski Jezik and English. Uh, so already it's being used. The unilateral statements, which a lot of people have been speculating about, is a very uh, common way in the European Union that countries concerned can give a context for a, a decision but what is important is that basically we moved on. Macedonian language is there and that is what the European Union 
uh, is referring to without qualification. Vicepremierot za evropski prašanja Bojan Marečić izjavi dека 45% од законодавството е усогласено со Европската унија. Се согласувате ли со овие тврдења? Well, um, certainly it's true that this country has made steady progress in implementing, in, sorry, in putting into place the, what we call the EU acquis, which is the norms and legislation of the European Union. Uh, indeed, when President von der Leyen came to Skopje, she said this country could be a front runner uh, in the accession process because there are clearly some areas where the country is even more advanced than, than others who are already in the process. And there are others, of course, where they're behind. So um, aligning with the EU norms and standards is important. But the thing about the accession process, the thing about screening, it is not a, you know, a bureaucratic box ticking exercise you could be 100% aligned. But as everyone in this country and other countries knows, if you don't implement, if you don't enforce, then it's not meaningful. So alignment is very important, but it's also a discussion about how to implement and how to ensure enforcement. Does it mean that it can be done in the process of negotiation? Well, it's, it's always the, the, how, the question of how long will it take until you join is a question of how quickly do you implement the reforms necessary so that when you join the European Union, both from the EU perspective, you can act as a, a member which is responsible and able to implement all the rules and laws and compete equally, and also from your perspective that you are resilient and strong enough to compete in this powerful um, organization and in this powerful uh, single market. So there are some areas where you are more advanced than others, but there are others where a great deal of work still has to be done. As you know, we, we publish once a year this uh, report which looks into uh, general progress in EU reforms and the general sense is of steady progress, but still a great deal more to be done. Кога сме кај реформите, нивното спроведување е клучно во процесот на преговори со Европската унија, а особено борбата против корупцијата и владење на правото. Колку на вистина правдата е задоволена кога лица кои се осудени и се од интерес на јавноста како поранишниот шеф на УБК Сашо Мијалков и бизнесменот Орце Камчев со промена на адреса бираат каде ќе одслужуваат затворска казна? This uh, area, reform of the rule of law, justice, and also the, the, the fight against corruption is a good example of what we've just been talking about. Uh, there has been progress. You shouldn't, one shouldn't deny that. We can see areas where things have improved. But there is still a great deal more to be done. Uh, if you talk to anybody, any taxi driver, any, any ordinary citizen, they'll give you examples of corruption or they'll give you examples where the justice system is still not delivering. Uh, so a great deal more needs to be done. Um, steady progress, yes, we need to build on that. Uh, we need to assist the, from the European Union side. But now we have the great opportunity with the opening of negotiations. It's in your hands, ultimately, how quickly you move forward. And that's a question about the reforms that you put in place. And not just reforms, which we talk about, and then people don't feel it in the street, but reforms which actually mean a difference and people can say, yes, yes, we're starting to see that things are moving. It takes a long time, but it's about a transformation of the country. Thank you very much.